Hey guys, welcome back. Let's configure Mac 3 for our UC300. Start by opening Mac 3 and create a new profile. Select default profile values and enter a name. Now click OK and select the profile you just created and click OK again. Go ahead and select the Terms and Conditions and hit I Agree. OK, now we have a clean profile in Mac 3 and we can go ahead and configure it for our UC300 controller. Start by going to Config and then General Config. In here we need to change three settings. The first setting will be Tool Change. Select Stop Spindle, Wait for Cycle Start. Then we can go over and slave our home axis with our master axis. And lastly, under screen control, set high res screens. Click OK. Now before we restart Mac 3, we need to go to config, slave axis. Here we will slave our A axis with our Y axis. This is so that our A axis will move in unison with our Y axis. Now click OK and OK again. One last step before we restart Mac 3. Config, select native units, click OK. And now you need to choose between millimeters or inches. I'm doing mine in millimeters, so all the settings I provide will be in millimeters. Select this and click OK. Now let's save our settings. Config, save settings. And now you can go ahead and close Mac 3. End session, yes. While we have Mac 3 closed, we need to copy in the DLL file that is used for the controller. I'll put the link in the description for this DLL below. First, copy the file. Now find your Mac 3 directory. This is usually in C drive, Mac 3. Now go into the plugins folder and paste the DLL file. Now you can close this and start Mac 3 again. Select the profile we created before and click OK. Now we want to select the Digital Dream plugin and click OK. Now go ahead and plug in your USB port. The machine is now active. So now we need to go ahead and configure the ports and pins. To do this, start by going to Config, Ports and Pins. And we're going to start with our motor outputs. Here we will enable X, Y, Z, and A, and now we will enter our step pins and our dirt pins. For X axis, we will use step pin 2, dirt pin 3. Y axis, step pin 4, dirt pin 5. Z axis, step pin 6, dirt pin 7, and the A axis, dirt pin, step pin 8, dirt pin 9. Now click apply and move over to our input signals. Here we will set some numbers, however we will come back in and correct these later once we've done some testing. So for starters, X Home Enable, the port we will set to 1, and the pin number we will set to 3. Our Y Home, we will set our port number to 1, and our pin number to 4. Our Z Home, our port 1, and pin number 5. Now scroll down until you can find the E stop. Make sure it is enabled, set the port number to 1, and the pin number to 1, and click Apply, and OK. The first thing we want to test is our e-stop. Bring the machine out of emergency mode by clicking Reset, and now activate your e-stop switch. If everything is configured correctly, you should go into emergency mode again. Once we have done this and confirmed things are working, we're going to go to our motor tuning. So up to configure, motor tuning. Here we're going to set the following values. On our x-axis, our steps per millimeter will be 400. Our velocity will be 4000. And our acceleration will be 300. Save axis settings and then select your y-axis. The same values, steps per millimeter, 400, 
velocity 4000 and acceleration 300. Save axis settings and Z axis. Steps 400, velocity 4000, acceleration 300. Save and lastly our A axis. Steps 400, velocity 4000, acceleration 300. Save axis settings and verify that all of these have stayed the same. The velocity may change by a decimal or two. Click OK. Now we're going to test moving our motors. First, make sure the machine is out of reset mode and that everything is clear from the machine. Now we're going to press our right arrow. You can see the machine has moved in the left direction. This means that we need to reverse the direction that our motor is going. We can do this easily by going to Config, Ports and Pins, Motor Outputs, and by finding our X axis and changing our Dur Low Active Pin to Enabled. Click Apply and OK. Bring the machine out of reset and press the right arrow again. And the left arrow. OK, this is correct. When we press the right arrow, the numbers go in the positive direction. The machine moves to the right. When we press the left arrow, the numbers go in the negative direction and the machine moves to the left. We can now move on to our Y axis. To start, I'm going to push my up arrow and the machine should move away from me. OK, the machine moved towards me, so we also need to reverse these pins. Config, Ports and Pins, Motor Outputs, we need to find our Y axis and change our Dur Low Active pin again. We also need to find our A axis. Select that, click Apply and OK, bring the machine out of reset and press the up arrow again. That's better. Now the down arrow. OK, this is good. When we press the up arrow, the machine moves away, the numbers go in the positive direction. When we press the down arrow, the machine moves towards us and the numbers go in the negative direction. Now we can move on to our Z axis. To test this, we will use our page up and page down keys. First, I'm going to press my page down and now my page up. OK, good. When I press page down, the numbers go in the negative direction and the machine moves down. When I press page up, the numbers go in the positive direction and the machine moves up. If yours isn't moving in the correct direction, go into ports and pins and select the DER pin on the Z axis to reverse it. Now we can configure our end stops. First, go over to the diagnostics page and on the right hand side here, you'll see our three end stops, M1, M2 and M3 home. You can see that they're all illuminated right now. This is because we have our end stops in a normally connected mode. The reason for this is they will trigger if there is a cable cut, allowing you to stop the machine before you crash it into the end stop. OK, let's tell the machine that these are in this mode. First, press the Z end stop to find out which LED is changing. OK, we see it's our M1 home. Now let's go over to Config, Ports and Pins, and Input Signals. M1 home is X home, so when we are firing this, it's pin 3. This means we need to move pin 3 to our Z home. And let's put our 5 back in our X home. Click Apply, OK. Come out of reset mode and press the Z end stop again. That's better. Now let's press our X end stop. We can see that M2 home is triggering here. So let's go to Config, Ports and Pins, Input Signals. Now M2 should actually be our Y axis, so let's swap the 5 with the 4. And while we're here, we can change our active low mode. This is to accept our normally connected mode that we have the machine in. So tick the boxes for X Home, Y Home and Z Home. Click Apply and OK. Bring the machine out of reset mode. You'll now notice that all of the lights are not illuminated. 
when we press them, they should illuminate. So let's try our Z. That's good. Now our X. Good. And lastly, our Y axis. Okay, that's all good. Now what we need to do is configure our homing. Jog the machine so that it's closer to the end stops to make this faster. Go back to the program run screen. With your hand ready on the E stop, press the reference all home and watch the machine move. If the machine is moving away from the end stop, press the E stop button. Okay, mine is moving down, which is away from my e-stop, so I will press the reset button. Go to config, homing and limits, and find the home negative on the z-axis and select it. Now press OK, and try this again. That's better. Once the machine reaches the end stop, it will start trying to home the next axis. Okay, my y-axis is moving the wrong direction. It's moving away from the end stop. So let's reset the machine. Go to config. Homing and limits. Find our y-axis. Set it to home negative. Click OK. And try again. Our z-axis will home. Then our y-axis. Once this is done, our x-axis should start. Okay, again, the wrong direction. So let's reset the machine, config, homing and limits, find our z-axis, find our x-axis, click home negative and click OK. Let's reference all again. There is our z, our y, and lastly, our x. Okay, all of our axes have home correctly. It's important to jog the machine around to make sure that you don't have any axis binding. It may be that you need to lower the velocity of your machine. However, I find this to be a sweet spot as long as the machine is built well. Once you're happy with this, it's very important to remember config save settings. If you don't do this, you will have to reconfigure your machine when you close Mac 3. The next thing I like to do is to change my screen set. I'll put a link in the description below to the screen set I like to use. For this, view, load screen sets, find the screen set file. For me, it's dark screen. Click open and wait for it to load. And config, save settings. And that's it. Now your machine is ready to use. If you do have a VFD and you are going to control this, please check out some of my previous videos I did on configuring this. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe if you can and stay tuned for more videos.